Golliver joins me now to discuss this incredible performance, and it's our adrenaline performance presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Ben, this was the all-time highest point total by a player with less than 30 minutes of playing time ever in the NBA. What made this performance so unique? Well, Maggie, what made it unique is that he came out of the game. I mean, that's why it's the most for uh, guys under 30 minutes, because usually guys get to stay in for longer than 30 minutes. And I'm sure you were sitting there watching that game just like I was, wishing that he could go back in there for the fourth quarter. And I understand sportsmanship, and, and I actually appreciate Golden State and, and how they approach these things, because they're regularly running up these massive point totals. But I think just once we want a team – uh, to keep it a little bit closer than the Pacers did last night so we could see what Clay Thompson is uh, truly capable of. I mean, 60 points in, in less than three quarters is phenomenal. I mean, that really puts him on track to kind of go after, like, Kobe Bryant's 81-point uh, mark against the Raptors. I just wanted more. and It was a little bit disappointing that the game ended with him on the bench for the final 13 minutes. Yeah, do you think Coach Steve Kerr is going to get any backlash for that decision? I mean, how many points do you think Clay Thompson could have scored? Well, here's uh, the rub for with Steve Kerr. He knows that this is kind of a, a repeatable phenomenon. I mean, it's not like this is an accident. He's got an offense that's potentially going to be the greatest in NBA history. I think they're on track to do that right now, and I think that they can maintain it. Uh, they've got so many options that a secondary uh, catch-and-shoot guy like Clay Thompson can just get open at will. Uh, and he only had eight three-pointers, I say only in quotation marks, uh, but that's not that crazy of a performance for Clay Thompson. If he can score 60 points with only eight three-pointers, what happens when he starts to make 12 or 13 or 14 in a game, which is definitely uh, sort of in his wheelhouse? So I think what Steve Kerr is banking on is don't force it. You know, at some point when you have an offense with this many weapons, this much ex explosive potential, at some point they're just going to naturally stumble into some of these huge records. And, and I actually think there's a lot of merit to that. I mean, I really think that we should be bracing ourselves at some point, whether it's this year, next year, the year after, uh, this machine is going to break one of these records that we thought were never going to be broken. Yeah, one of those is obviously Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game. Could Thompson do it? Okay, I'm not going to go that far. But I do think the one that we should circle is 81, Kobe Bryant's 81, because that's uh, kind of the modern record, right? That's the one that we think of when we think of just – a guard or a perimeter player going absolutely nuts and getting red hot and staying red hot for an entire game. And I think they've actually got three different guys who could make a run at 81 if they really wanted to in Steph, Durant, and Thompson. If they really put their mind to it, let's say they scored 40, uh, 40 in the first half like Clay Thompson did and the game was still tight uh, down the stretch. I absolutely think any of those guys are a threat to Kobe Bryant. And uh, I'm sure Kobe Bryant is somewhere away from basketball watching this with a nice glass of wine saying, wow, uh, you know, th this is my legacy. Constantly getting brought up in these conversations about the, uh, the best NBA scores, and uh, he should have that. That should be his legacy. And that's the one that I would circle if I'm saying, uh, who can the Warriors really chase?